And they tell a story that uh, a boy challenged him to a duel. Now, all of the friends, the people of, of these two boys, assumed it would be, was going to be a fake duel. They were going to load pistols with powder and shoot powder at each other, and it was just going to be a make-believe duel. But John Henry, they said, showed up with a loaded revolver and said he would use his own gun for the duel. Well, needless to say, the other boy backed down very quickly. So he had a streak in him. Holiday was not only one of the most colorful characters in the Old West, but also one of the most feared. He acquired the nickname of Doc, honestly, earning a degree in dentistry and practicing in several towns. However, he eventually spent nearly all his time as a professional gambler and occasionally as a gunfighter. He had a vicious temper and feared no man, perhaps because tuberculosis had already given him a death sentence. Doc Holliday is born John Henry Holliday in 1851 in Griffin, Georgia, about 40 miles south of Atlanta. His parents are of South Carolina pioneer stock of Scotch-Irish and English ancestry. Doc's father, Henry Holliday, is an attorney who fights the Indians in 1838, the Mexicans in 1846, and the Yankees in 1861 rising to the rank of major in the Civil War before being forced by illness to resign his commission. Doc has a comfortable middle-class childhood and receives a good education. His mother, Alice, is a classic Southern belle. She teaches him manners and etiquette, while his father regales him with war stories and tales of survival. Doc is only nine years old when the Civil War erupts in 1861. Three years later, the family flees General Sherman's march to the sea and moves farther south to Valdosta, where Doc is enrolled in the Valdosta Institute and studies all the subjects common to classical education, including rhetoric, history, and Latin. He wishes that instead of studying, he was fighting the Yankees. Nonetheless, Doc is a good student and receives an excellent education considering the Civil War, which by the fall of 1864 is ravaging Georgia. Here's Doc Holliday biographer Gary Roberts. He was popular. He was good at the, on the dance floor. He learned all the proper social graces. Uh, he was polite. And he seems to have gotten along well with most people. But he also had a, an ornery side. They tell a story that uh, a boy challenged him to a duel. Now, all of the friends, the people of, of these two boys, assumed it would be, was going to be a fake duel. They were going to load pistols with powder and shoot powder at each other, and it was just going to be a make-believe duel. But John Henry, they said, showed up with a loaded revolver and said he would use his own gun for the duel. Well, needless to say, the other boy backed down very quickly, so he had a streak in him. In September 1866, after two years of painful suffering, Doc's mother dies of tuberculosis, known then as consumption. Here's Old West historian Jeff Moray and Victoria Wilcox, author of Southern Sun, the Saga of Doc Holliday. They called it consumption because it sort of consumed you. It was very long, slow disease, and it would really eat you away from the inside out. And the classic way to die of consumption was really to suffocate. From 1800 to 1870, one out of five deaths in America was attributed to consumption. He's always been close to his mother, and her death comes as a great blow. His bad temper, which he inherited from his father, worsens. The blonde-haired, blue-eyed, boyish-looking 15-year-old John Henry Holliday is not physically imposing, but as other boys learn, he is no one to trifle with. In 1870, Doc is off to the Pennsylvania College of Dental Surgery, considered one of the best dental schools in the nation. 
At just 20 years of age, Doc graduates in 1872 near the top of his class and begins practicing in Atlanta during the summer. Here's Professor Arnett Gaston and Victoria Wilcox. He graduates so early in age that it was difficult for him to set up practice because he wasn't old enough yet. A clear testimony to his achievement, his critical thinking skills, and he was good. Doc Holliday was the epitome of a Southern gentleman, which meant that he was mannerly and likely also hot-tempered, all those things that go along with living in the South during the Civil War and Reconstruction. There's a story that a gold crown he made for a girl's molar was still in place when she died at the age of 102 in 1967. Here's Old West historian Stephen Shaw. He came home, he opened up his own practice with another gentleman. Here's a young man, 21, 22 years of age, uh, six foot tall or almost, a doctor, very good looking according to the records, a good catch for any woman. Doc would have married a genteel woman and started a family. At night, he would sit by the parlor fire in his comfortable Georgia home, and he would die in old age, surrounded by loved ones. <laughs> Instead, Doc Holliday starts coughing. Doc begins to rapidly lose weight, has night fevers, weakness, and his coughing up of blood begins to interfere with his practice. He goes to a doctor and is found to have, like his mother, tuberculosis, at the time a fatal disease. The cause isn't known and there is no cure. He is given six months to live. However, he is told that the drier climate of the American West might prolong his life by as much as two years. Rather than die bedridden, Doc begins packing. The family is upset. No one more than his cousin, Maddie Holliday, a beautiful blonde who has had a crush on Doc for years. She will correspond with Doc and pine for him. The biggest problem, if this is a case, was that while first cousins marrying was very common, it was not common among Catholics, and she was Catholic. 